Chris the Carpenter here. Uh, this is everything I know about milling PCBs with a CNC. Okay. Uh, so this, well, first of all, this is my CNC, and I've got my router and dust collection set up on here right now because I just finished remilling my vacuum table. This is my vacuum table. It's uh, two layers, a three-quarter MDF. It's hollow inside, actually more like a like a honeycomb or a grid with a channel lining up with each one of these holes that lines up to a recess here, which goes through a hole here. This is hollow. This is actually a duct made of three-quarter with some quarter-inch material on either side and eventually goes to this port where my shop vac will attach. Now, um, so it's just a reverse air hockey table. The board gets sucked down like that to the board to keep it flat while milling. Now what I just did with the router is I basically just had it mill a, a, a pocket. This is basically just a, a big 10 inch pocket and uh, in essence what it did was it milled this surface perfectly flat in relation to how the machine moves. The machine's table itself is milled <clears throat> flat and then this is sitting on that table flat and then this deck is milled again perfectly flat and I also have this vacuum table set right up to the lip this is the lip from planing the table and um, it's it's the extent of the travel of the machine that's as far as the bit will go well there's a little tiny lip here which allowed me to get this vacuum table up against that lip and that lip since it was milled by the machine is perfectly parallel with the travel of the machine. That's incredibly important. Um, that line is parallel with travel and then as this was milled out this is parallel with travel. So when I added this little plexiglass ledge here this edge is perfectly straight and parallel with the line of travel of the machine. Okay. So basically when I put my board here and I'm going to mill, this will be zero, 00 at this point, and I'm going to mill one side of the board, and then I need to flip the board over and mill the other side going the other way, with this being zero, and we're milling that way. Now, it all comes down to establishing this zero point, and I figured out a very snazzy way of doing that, and it also does not require a vacuum table. This is the vacuum table I had made to do double-sided boards and it was so big it warped um, almost ten thousandths of an inch uh, which was completely unusable and it continued to warp so I, I needed to keep planing it over and over to use it. The smaller one is a thousand times better at warping and it seems to maintain its flat and, um, and my new flipping procedure does not require a giant table so uh, let me set up for that and I will show you how we're going to do this. All right, so we've now switched over to uh, the Dremel tool and the Dremel tool bracket. And uh, we've taped off all of the holes on the vacuum table. And you can see right there, I've got my bit zeroed out to my starting location. Now, let me show you this. Um, Eagle, that's the one I want. Okay, so. This is what we're milling right here. And if you look down in this corner, there is an extra pad that I added manually. And that pad happens to be perfectly at zero, zero. And that's really important. If we look over here, uh, let's go to our tool path. That pad is right there at zero, zero. And that is gonna be our reference point when we flip. Um, this is the way I've discovered to do this. I've zeroed the machine out. Um, we're going to do our drilling first. I've discovered that's really important as well. Um, fire up our shop vac here. Now, I'm going to double check that this board is nice and flush against this edge. Very important. I'm going to go ahead and raise the bit a little bit and fire this baby up. And here we go. OK, 
Okay, so we're done with the drilling. All the, if I get in here, all the drilling is done. So we're gonna start milling this board. Now, I have not turned off the shop back, and I have not moved the board. It's exactly the same as it is. And I'm using the same zero. I'm gonna return the machine back to zero, with the exception of, I'm gonna re-zero only the Z. So from here on out, it's a, it's a system of zeroing out each axis selectively, but maintaining a zero from the previous zero. For instance, right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a multi-tester and a continuity check to know exactly when that bit touches the material. So I'm going to zero that bit out and then we'll go from there. All right, so I've zeroed this bit out. It's zeroed flush with the material, and it's zeroed to that zero, zero point. That's our original starting point. So we'll fire this up. And hit go. Now, I've also switched to a milling bit, obviously. So here we go. Perfect. the top side yeah this is the top side of the milling with that zero point so we'll finish this and I'll show you the flip okay so I have now drilled and etched the top this is actually a single-sided board there's no connections on the top now <clears throat> I'm gonna flip it and again I'm gonna use that little hole to zero it out so I can set this back on my vacuum table and get it flush with this edge and I'm going to I'm going to move the bit over to that starting hole now the distance from the edge of here to there that's the y-axis I'm going to leave it at the previous zero because even though we flipped it this way to go to the side so this distance the distance from that hole to this ledge is the same there as it is the same there again this edge being parallel with the travel of the machine crazy important so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, I'm going to fire up the uh, the vacuum hold this down and then I'm going to pull this tight against the fence and then I'm going to I'm going to use the actual taper of the bit to stick the bit down in that hole and I'm going to eyeball it this way and I'm gonna eyeball that taper to either side of that hole until we're perfectly centered on that hole. We know we're centered this way because we haven't changed that zero yet. We're still zeroed on the Y. So we just have to re-zero the X and I'm gonna re-zero the Z for depth on this side. And, uh, and that should be it in theory. So, uh, so let me do that. Here we go. had a really fairly glorious fail. Um, I finished the other side of the board, the milling, and uh, I, if it was milled by Freddy Krueger, it would have made his mother proud, I tell you what. Uh, but in terms of usable stuff, uh, I got a mangled board here. Mangled. And um, I mean, there's just depth. I mean, look at that. Look at those depth issues. Um, it went so deep. It just, it just, it just ate it alive. I mean, it's just, it just ate it alive. Okay, but I'll tell you why this is a good thing. <clears throat> this is exactly why I like robots, and this is exactly why I like projects like this, and why I like science. And it is um, eliminating variables and refining problems. So, what I did today was I remilled my vacuum table. I reestablished a new fence that's nice and tight and I did it in a way where I can remove this table and then re-put it back in exactly the same place every time. 
but that didn't even matter this time because this it was milled and wasn't moved and then used so the table is perfect uh, that is a variable removed um, I remade this clamp and just tidied it up a little bit it's a lot tighter you can see I don't even have bolts through it and the Dremel is just solid as a rock so that's tidier um, and then, uh, as you can see, my whole flipping idea is perfect. So look at those two holes at the bottom with the hole in the center or in, yeah, I guess that'll have to be these two. So look at that. And then as we flip it over, there they are right there. So just absolutely perfect, perfect alignment. So, uh, so we've also established by screwing up this board that, uh, that my flip works perfectly and the fact that I can flip it and slide it sideways, with I can use a much smaller table, which is more, uh, less prone to warp. So that's incredibly awesome. Uh, but more importantly, it has shown us the last two variables. Uh, number one is Radio Shack boards tend to vary in thickness a lot more than I thought they did. A lot more. Uh, so I'm going to have to figure out what to do about that. I'm probably going to have to buy decent board online. Number two is, and I thought I heard this in the past, I thought I heard it when I was milling the top side of this board for this video, uh, and I, cer I certainly heard it. I, I sure as heck heard it uh, when, I'm milling, when I was milling this, and that was the terrible sound of a bearing going out in the Dremel tool. And, uh, and there just ain't nothing we can do about this. That, this. This has been a real good one. This has lived a very, very happy life and is treated me very well and will continue to treat me well for basically everything but milling but uh, it sure does look like I am replacing my uh, my spindle as it were um, because uh, I could hear a difference in tone and I could see I could see an immediate difference in the depth of cut um, so I've got noise coming from here and a visual representation of that noise as a depth of cut change um, on the material so um, so yeah, the bottom line is uh, I'm in a great place right now. I'm at a place where um, I only have two things to fix to get this perfect, and I know if I fix those two things that I know I'll be perfect, and uh, and I know what those two things are. So I'm going to buy some non-crappy board. Uh, I'm going to uh, see what I can MacGyver together about a new spindle system, maybe belts and pulleys, I don't know, um, something there. And, uh, and other than that, I think we're golden. The table is nice and flat. Flipping system works fantastic. It's more simple than it could ever be. I'm happy. I'm very, very, very happy. And I pray to God that I was able to edit this video together in less than 15 minutes uh, with all these clips. So um, more information, including the software I use to spit the, the, the G code out of Eagle. Um, and everything else, all the other stuff that I know, which is not much, uh, is in a blog post. So wherever you're watching this video, uh, probably just down there, if it's YouTube, in the description, uh, there's a click. Click the click, and you'll go to the blog or whatever, and you'll, you'll know whatever I know, which is not much. But um, like I said, this is, I think, my very last failure um, until I got this 100%. So I'm super, 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 super duper stoked. And I could probably even save that board with a whole bunch of jumpers and uh, at least play with the little project I'm working on. So, circuit board milling figured out. Next time will be perfect. Ding!